But why, some say, the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why, 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. In the following documentary, we are going to review theories, opinions, and facts about the origins of planet Earth's moon, theories about bases on the moon, how it got here, and much more. The moon is Earth's only natural satellite, at about one quarter the diameter of Earth. It is the fifth largest satellite in our solar system. It's the largest satellite relative to its planet, and larger than any known dwarf planet. There are many theories on how the moon was created. Some believe by a planetary collision. Others believe the moon was brought here and placed in orbit. But none of these theories can be proved 100%. PhD. Paul Davis. When I was a student, nobody really knew where the moon came from, and because it's so relatively big, uh, this was a real problem. Author. Technology of the Gods. David Childress. It's just perfectly in that orbit to eclipse our sun. The odds of the moon being in that orbit accidentally are a zillion to one. So that right there is evidence that our moon is in a perfect orbit around our planet that's not accidental. The theory that aliens brought the moon to planet Earth is gaining more ground in the past few years. It seems, it's as likely to be true, as it is to prove it not to be. If this theory is true, the technology needed to complete such a task, is thousands of years ahead of the human race. Author, who built the moon, Alan Butler. With the idea that the moon must be an artificial object, they based their ideas on, first of all, the fact that it appeared that the moon was hollow. Since no hollow planet could exist according to the known laws of physics, that would mean that the moon had to be an artificial, an engineered object. The odds of our moon being placed in orbit around Earth, and be the exact distance needed from the sun, to be perfectly placed to eclipse the Earth, is incomprehensible. Some theorize. The moon is an alien spacecraft. Radio host. Coast to Coast AM. George Nury. Well, these Russian scientists, their theory is that the moon is a spaceship. It's got engines within, but that on the outside, they've coated it with this moon looking substance. Now it's a far-fetched idea, but it makes a lot of sense in that you might want to shroud or cloak this craft and make it look like a uh, very natural object. Publisher, Legendary Times Magazine, Giorgio Tsoukalos. Suggestion is outlandish. However, it's only through their calculations and all the mathematics, they determined that their theory is correct. If this theory of alien beings bringing the moon to planet Earth to be true, what would be the reason? Recently, researchers discovered a huge unexplained mass of metal buried in the crust of the moon, located down by its south pole. Those who speculate that the moon is a hollow spaceship wonder if this enormous mass of metal might be remnants of the terraforming that hollowed out the moon. There are ancient stories that speak of a time when the moon was not up in the sky. And there are descriptions that say that the moon was artificially pulled into place. So if we have two modern Russian scientists who have suggested that perhaps the moon was pulled into place, and that is a corroboration of ancient mythologies, that's when I listen. A growing number of people around the world are starting to consider this theory. So the whole idea that our moon is some gigantic hollow spaceship 
that's been put into a special orbit around our planet and contains cities and structures that are inside and outside of the moon is to me a very reasonable assertion. And in fact, it would seem to be that our moon is some kind of gigantic artificial spaceship. Many speculate. The moon was brought here by alien beings to mine our resources. Primarily, gold. One of the most popular alternative theories suggests that mining was first undertaken thousands of years ago, by the Anunnaki, a race of alien miners, and incidentally, are also credited with the creation of the human species on Earth. According to the ancient Sumerian texts, the advanced civilization of the Anunnaki, a term that means those who from heaven to Earth came, it is believed they come to mine planet Earth's resources. Some believe the Anunnaki's homeworld ran out of resources, and their atmosphere was depleted. For many thousands of years, the Anunnaki exploited the rich gold deposits on planet Earth. However, thousands of years ago, some of the Anunnaki rebelled over their dissatisfaction with their working conditions and the labor-intense mining operations. The Anunnaki were still in desperate need of gold, in order to circumvent the dissatisfaction of the miners, it was decided to create a breed of miners who would effectively be slave workers. The Anunnaki use genetic manipulation and in vitro fertilization techniques to create primitive workers so they can take over the backbreaking work in the gold mines. On July 16th, with the world watching, Apollo 11 took off from Kennedy Space Center with astronauts Neil Armstrong. Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins aboard. The next day at 4.17 p.m., the craft touched down on the southwestern edge of the Sea of Tranquility. At 10.56 p.m., Armstrong stepped off the ladder and planted his foot on the moon's powdery surface. Astronaut Buzz Aldrin recalls the adventure. When it got down to 30 seconds, uh, we were about 10 feet or less, and I could see that they were in the final phases. A little bit of drifting, and, uh, and I could sneak a look out because at that point, I don't think Neil cared what the numbers were. He was looking at the outside. Contact light. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Right. Did Buzz Aldrin witness the first sighting reported on the moon? During his trip to the moon, Buzz Aldrin recalls seeing a light that seemed to be following the craft. I saw this illumination that was moving with respect to the stars. We were smart enough to not say, uh, Houston, there's a light out there that's following us. So technically, it becomes an unidentified flying object. As reported, Neil Armstrong also had a sighting of something he never seen before. While uh, Neil and Buzz were on the lunar surface, Neil switched to the, the medical channel and spoke directly with the chief medical officer, saying, they're here, they're parked on the side of the crater, they're watching us. Many believe it was also reported that a craft was found on the moon, with an alien preserved inside. Is this possibly an Anunnaki alien that ancient Sumerian text suggests that aliens created humans? Let's take a look at the recording said to be of an alien that was found on the moon. The other thing that is inside this lunar module looks like a woman, and this is the alien that they recovered from the ship. There was a study done by the Brookings Institute in the early 1960s, so before NASA went to the moon, there was sort of this idea that if we were to have any kind of interaction with alien life form or intelligence, that maybe we shouldn't tell the public because the public might not be able to handle it. As the evidence keeps piling up, is it possible the alien found on the moon could be the race that brought the moon to Earth? The idea of the moon being an alien spacecraft is gaining more ground as new discoveries come to light. If aliens brought the moon to Earth, is mankind ready to accept that theory? It has also been reported, astronauts have seen white flashes on the moon's surface. Hey, I just saw a flash on the lunar surface. Right out there, near that crater. Could the flashing lights be a discharge of energy, possibly, coming from inside the moon? Similar to the exhaust from an engine. More than one astronaut, have said, 
they have witnessed the white flashes of light. It's also been stated, that a mist of type, was seen flowing out of, or over the moon's surface in some areas. Could this be aliens inside the moon discharging atmosphere? It has also been reported, that blue lights were hovering over the moon's surface near the landing. Excursion on Apollo 17. And in this image, you see a moonscape, but you see something else. Up here in the corner, is a really odd three-dot object. We don't know what it is. Could these blue lights, be stars, far off in the distance? Or possibly, of alien craft, observing the landing site on the surface. Many question the depth of craters on the moon. It seems that a large impact site, has the same depth, as small impact sites. This has many baffled as to the reason why. Some do have theories about it. One of the things that's really interesting about lunar craters is that even though some of them are very large and some of them are very small, they all seem to have the same depth. And that really shouldn't happen on a planetary body. There should be variation in depth. So why are the moon's craters so uniform? It's really, really unusual, and it's really not explainable in terms of conventional or established geophysics. The scarred surface of the moon shows many impact sites, all of which seem to be the same depth. Craters on the moon are nowhere near similar to what they should look like. In fact, they are incredibly wide craters, and wherever the impact point is, they're convex, which means there's still the bulge of the moon, so this doesn't make any sense. Some speculate that there is something in a sphere shape within the moon, protecting it from impacts. Is it possible that an alien race built a metal sphere on the inside of the moon? It's likely that there is something under the lunar surface which is very resilient and which is preventing craters going any deeper than they do. This could only really be either much harder rock, which it can't be because of the mass of the moon, or alternatively, a metal sphere of some kind, which is preventing more damage. On missions to the moon, NASA had astronauts place seismographs at certain locations on the moon. They are going to crash part of the rocket into the surface of the moon. The results were, the moon vibrated for hours. It was decided by NASA to impact the moon a second time, but this time it would be a larger piece of a rocket. After impact, the readings were similar. The moon again, rang like a bell. Readings were showing vibrations, 20 miles deep into the moon. There have been many strange anomalies and structures, reported on the moon's surface. Some believe these structures are made by aliens. Others believe that they could be made by our government. Is it possible, that these structures, or what some believe to be bases, are engineering from an inner city, that could exit out of the surface, of the moon from within. We are going to take a look at some structures that have been recorded. The first one we will view, is what some refer to as, the bridge. How do we know for sure that this feature is truly a bridge? Could it be an enclosed pathway, from one location to another? To cross over the crater and remain sheltered from space? Or, could it be engineering pipes from within? It also could be naturally formed from the impact of a meteor. It's been widely open to debate, of how it became, for quite some time. The next one we will review, possibly looks to be a crashed alien spacecraft. Some speculate, it looks like an observation post. Others believe, it could be an entrance or elevator to within. Could this have formed naturally? Some assume. If it did form naturally. It seems odd, that there is no impact crater in the area. The shape of the object does not seem to be natural, due to its circular shape. It seems. It looks constructed by something or someone. The next image we are going to look at. Some say, it looks like the nuclear reactors, we have on Earth. Is it possible, that this could be a power source, if the moon was a spacecraft? This structure, stands miles high, off the moon's surface. It has a cylinder shape, and it does not look like it formed naturally. We are going to take a look at a structure, 
resembles a cannon like the ones used in our early days. It appears to be embedded in the side of the crater wall. Could it be a space weapon? Or possibly, an exhaust pipe from within? One would doubt that this formed naturally. Now, we are going to take a look at, is what some believe to be a communication satellite. Like the ones we have on Earth. Many have claimed that the structure's dish, is miles wide and stands miles high, from the moon's surface. Could this possibly be an alien communication satellite? Or, by an impact that sent debris in the air, and back down to the moon's surface. And formed, what appears to be a dish. The last structure we are going to take a look at. Many speculate that it is a base. A group of buildings connected. Is it possible that this is an abandoned base from years in the past? If so, what secrets will be uncovered? It seems hard to believe these structures are made naturally. Straight lines, circular shapes. Mother Nature does not design that way. Many believe, that these structures are made by something, or, someone. Former NASA contractor, Ken Johnston. In my opinion, that is not a natural structure. It's got to be some intelligent species that created it. Recently a story was released, that a discovery was made of what some call a megastructure. Is it possible, a civilization has the technology to create something on that scale? If so, would it not be similar to our moon being an alien spacecraft? Physics. Michio Kaku. It could be as big as the discovery of the wheel. The invention of fire. We're talking about a story of all stories. Because yeah. this could change our understanding of our place in the universe. A megastructure perhaps bigger than a planet that's controlled by an intelligence. As to what could cast a shadow bigger than Jupiter. Mm -hmm. Think about it for a moment. If this object is artificial, it means that a civilization has been able to manipulate an object bigger than Jupiter. The last possibility is that it's artificial. Mm -hmm. And if it is, it's an object bigger than a planet that's casting a shadow in front of the mother star. It could be a Dyson sphere. A Dyson sphere is built by civilization that can play with stars, that envelop the entire star with a shell, absorbing all the starlight. You would have to be thousands of years ahead of us. A type 1 civilization, for example, just harnesses the, the power of the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Weather control, for example, like Buck Rogers, maybe. This is a type 2 civilization, perhaps, that can play with stars, like in Star Trek. Mm -hmm. The Federation of Planets would be type 2. Then what is type 3? Galactic, like Star Wars would be a type 3 civilization. Now, what are we in comparison? Do we play with the weather? Do we play with stars? No, we're type zero. We get our energy from coal and from oil, dead yeah. plants basically. So this civilization, if it is one, will be thousands of years ahead of us. Remember Carl Sagan said remarkable claims require remarkable proof. Mm -hmm. We want remarkable proof because this is a remarkable claim. Are there alien civilizations out there with the capability to turn the moon into a spacecraft? To be able to harness a star's power? Travel galaxies in a short time? If so, mankind has many wonderful discoveries to explore in our future, and using what we have learned in the past, to help guide us. Will mankind, be up for the task?